Namaste. This is Parivatani from Jalmya Vidya Mandir, Jalmya Pram. Hope you are all very safe and secured in your home. Science is a poetry of reality. Hope hearing this quote, you will be knowing about what subject we are going to see. It's none other than the great science. We are going to see a very interesting topic about science today. William Shakespeare had given a wonderful quote, the world is full a big drama and we are all an actor and actress. But what I would suggest is the world is a living place where many organisms evolve day by day. How do these organisms evolve day by day? The main thing is because of nutrition. As they get nutrition, we can see many, many organisms in this world. Yes, our topic I am going to continue with the nutrition in plants. The last week was <coughs> nutrition in plants. What we have seen, how the plants produce their own food through the process of photosynthesis. About that we, that we have seen in the last class. But what they get and how they take it, all those things, now we can see. What we have seen is the plants, what food they are have, taking is carbohydrate. Carbohydrates. What is what the carbohydrate consists of? The carbohydrates consist of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen molecules. Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen molecule. Apart from this, apart from this carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, some other nutrients is also needed for the plants for their growth. Am I right children? Only this is enough for the plant? No. The plants require one more important nutrient for its growth. Can anybody guess it? Yes. It is none other than nitrogen. What is it? Nitrogen. How come the plant get the nitrogen? How do the plants get the nitrogen? The nitrogen is a gas which is available in the oxygen in the air. The plants take this nitrogen from the uh, atmosphere and it will be utilized by the plant through a special kind of bacteria because the nitrogen gas which is present in the atmosphere cannot be directly taken by the plant. It will be converted to the adaptable form by the bacteria present in the soil. And apart from that, if suppose the bacteria is not present in the soil, what will happen? The nitrogen through the fertilizers. The farmers, they are throwing the fertilizers in the field. Through that, the plant will get the nitrogen source. So, these are all the requirements for the plant for its growth. Can you understand children? First, we have seen the photosynthesis process. And now, we have seen the requirements for the plant growth. And now, what I am going to explain is, I am going to explain you about the cell. What is meant by cell? Shall we see what is meant by cell? I told you, I will tell about the cell. This is the animal cell and this is the plant cell. What is meant by cell? Cell is the basic structural and functional unit of life. Without the cell, the organism cannot perform any function. The cell was discovered by Robert Hooke in the year 1665. Here we are seeing the animal cell and plant cell. I will show you how and how it performs and what are all the structure present. This is what the outer membrane. This is what the outer membrane. You can see both the in the plant cell and animal cell. And the next one is the nucleus. This is what the nucleus. The nucleus is called as the brain or the controlling center of the cell. And all these organelles, many organelles are present both in plant cell and animal cell. They are called as the cytoplasm. So about cell, we have learnt about only three main parts. 
the outer one is the cell membrane the outer covering is the cell membrane the controlling part of the cell is the nucleus and all the cell organelles are present in the cytoplasm and the fourth point is the cell is discovered by robert hooke in the year 1665 the cell is the basic structural and functional unit of life clear children all the other parts of the cell we will be learning in the next lesson hope children you have understood what is meant by cell and its structure now we shall move to the next topic of the same lesson and the beginning itself i told you there are two types of nutrition one is autotrophic nutrition and another one is the heterotrophic nutrition what is meant by autotrophic nutrition the organisms which can prepare their own food is called as autotrophic nutrition and the next one is the heterotrophic nutrition the plants have chlorophyll so they prepare their own food if suppose the plants they do not have chlorophyll what will they do they have to depend upon the other plants or animals like us for their food so such kind of organisms which depend on other organisms for their food are called as heterotrophs and that kind of nutrition is called as the heterotrophic nutrition under heterotrophic nutrition we will be learning about these three types the first one is the saprophytes the first one is the saprophytes the second one is the parasites and next one is the insectivorous plants the the plants which follow the saprophytic form of a uh, saprophytic mode of nutrition are called as saprophytes the same way the organisms which follow the parasitic mode of nutrition they are called as the parasites and insectivorous plants are a special and very interesting topic and we will be dealing each and everything in detail and first one i told you saprophytes here you should have a doubt see it is p h and i am not giving the pronunciation of p not saprophytes wherever the word p and h comes together we have to give a pronunciation as f pronunciation so saprophytes parasites insectivorous plants so this is for the next topic we are going to deal with in the next week so today's class what we have seen how what all the other nutrients required by the plants for its growth that is our first one and the second topic is the structure of the cell and the third topic is the other types of nutrition already so far now we have completed the autotrophic nutrition and we have started the heterotrophic nutrition under heterotrophic nutrition what i told you the different types alone that is the saprophytic nutrition parasitic nutrition and the insectivorous plants about this we will be dealing in our next class and your worksheet will be with the exercises of what i taught you today and i will give you the answers also if you have any doubts definitely you are welcome you can ask any doubt and we are having our zoom class also in the zoom classes you can note down your doubts what all you had so far and you can clear it in your zoom class thank you children